and I'm sorry that I probably bored half your audience to death. <laughs> no, it's good. Sorry, it's good reading to learn. warriors. It's good. It's good to learn about I'm a these dork. things. <laughs> to another video and a very special video and welcome if you're new here because we have a special guest hello my name's brennan i'm go. laura's husband he's my husband <laughs> Yay! so as you can probably tell by the title of this video we are going to talk about african literature yeah so brennan why are you in this video well, so I was born in Nigeria, Jos, Nigeria to be specific, and I moved to um, America when I was 13. West Africa in particular has a very uh, meaningful history to me, and uh, I think that African literature is oft too often ignored, um, and that should be fixed. I completely agree, especially with February being Black History Month, we want to celebrate it not just with Valentine's Day or extend Valentine's Day to show the love to all people, all cultures, all backgrounds, etc. and so forth. So, and it's a conversation we be, should be having more than just on February. Definitely, honestly. definitely. And that's why this video is coming out at the end of February so that we can see it at the end of February and continue to think about it through March and hopefully April and honestly, hopefully just through the rest of the year. But yeah. So, let's get started. Tell us about literature in Africa, the history of it, where it comes from, where it's at today. Give us a brief overview of the journey. Yeah, so a few caveats here before I begin. Um, firstly, I'm not an expert. Um, I'm just a college student. <laughs> For college um, students. Um, so I, I know a few things, but not everything. Secondly, I'm going to be speaking in generalities here. Um, Africa is not a country. It is a diverse um, continent full of different regions, different climates, different people groups, different languages. In Nigeria alone, where I um, was born, over 400 languages are spoken. That's a so lot. <laughs> spread that out across a continent. Yeah, and uh, if you know me and if you've seen my video booktube about me, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up top here and also in the video description below. I talk about uh, the importance of translation and the importance of translating books and so just hearing like how many different languages can be spoken in one country out of an entire continent it blows my mind and so I think it's very important for us to learn about it and to also think about translating these books so that we can read all of the knowledge the creativity and all these different things that could come out of Africa just like we do with other countries so today what I want to talk about is um, African history and, and its literature. So we, when we read Western texts, um, we already have the connotations and the history and the knowledge, the cultural knowledge to understand the tropes. But with Africa, we have, because of colonialism and uh, other reasons, we have uh, we're very unfamiliar with the histories and the African um, storytelling and its tropes. So I'm just going to give a quick overview of um, some African uh, storytelling methods and some uh, tropes. Africans are rich storytellers. Um, before colonialism, they had a long oral tradition um, with a lot of uh, gods, um, lots of storytelling, moral storytelling. So stories that would tell lessons, that would um, pass on lessons to the next generation. Um, oftentimes, uh, anthropologists would look at these stories and um, our authors would look at these stories with disregard because they weren't written down. Um, but through these stories, they're incredibly important because through these stories, we've been able to learn a lot of ancient history. If you look at the Bantu migration, we've been able to piece together the movements of an entire population group over 5,000 years ago. Um, 
based solely on stories. Um, and that, that's frankly incredible, passed down from generation to generation. And these stories um, are incredibly creative. Um, please look for like Ashanti, the trickster spider. Um, I grew up on stories of how he would outwit people. Um, and, and there are just numerous, numerous tales. Um, though this, again, um, not every part of Africa follows this trajectory. Um, Egypt, for example, uh, was one of the first um, uh, areas to ever have written a language um, uh, in the form of hieroglyphics. Uh, and Ethiopia has a long literary tradition. Um, check out uh, Zera Yokab. Um, he, he was in the, he was a theologian in the 1600s who um, predated Descartes um, with ideas of, uh, think, I think therefore I am, and uh, beautiful ideas of, uh, and reasonings for uh, faith and why we, me, we must believe in um, God. While still being incredibly progressive, he argued against polygamy um, as well as uh, other um, accepted practices of the time. Uh, unfortunately, then we come to a rather terrible part of African history that has really shaped what African literature is today. You can't understand African literature, unfortunately, without understanding colonialism and imperialism. Colonialism took away um, many of the storytellers, took away a lot of freedom from Africans. And two stories emerged out of colonialism. One coming from the white man and the other coming from uh, the agency of African actors fighting to express their own narrative and um, bring freedom to their people. So the uh, white man's story uh, was often tied in self-interest um, and economic interests. It argued that um, they were liberators, they came to Africa as heroes. So you'll see a lot of these um, authors like Cecil Rhodes, um, and even the more pro considered progressive authors like uh, Joseph Conrad and Heart of Darkness, still use Africans as a foil um, uh, and as props for their own stories. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we see this archetype of the um, uh, either the white savior or the uh, big white hunter. Yeah, um, I remember reading Heart mm -hmm. of Darkness in high school and just the way that the natives in Africa were painted. There was, they're savages, they don't know how to live life, they can't do anything without the white man. And, oh, I, was just, I hated reading it. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. terrible book. But. Well, it, it, it was good at recognizing that we are all kind of a little bit insane, but it used Africans as the point and case of look at Africans, they're so primal. Wait a second, I'm primal too, my We're God! All primal. Ah! <laughs> and Joseph Conrad does a good job of that, and he's one of the first authors to also recognize. He has a chapter in there where he talks uh, about just how bad it is in the Congo for Africans. Mm -hmm. um, but and that's one of the first times that uh, a white author is like, hey, maybe we shouldn't be beating slaves and Africans senseless. Um, Just a suggestion. But still, white authors of colonial periods were still very much tied to their ideas of uh, self-grandeur and self-importance. But then we see African resistance. So we see authors like Kwame Nkrumah, Franz Fanon, um, and they um, create a pan-African literature and an anti-colonial literature that takes um, ancient 
African storytelling and uh, unites it with uh, modern literature. But then we see African resistance. Um, Africans take the tools uh, provided by Western education and turn it against their colonial oppressors. So Kwame Nkrumah and like Franz Fanon, um, they write prolifically and brilliantly um, and form a pan-African movement calling for independence and um, calling for the abolishment of colonialism. And this is where this time period um, around independence and after independence is we, where we see some of the most brilliant um, African minds at work. Um, this is where we get Chinua Achebe, um, and I know many of you probably recognize uh, that name from Things Fall Apart, but I highly encourage you to check out his other works, um, including his poetry, uh, and also uh, check out his daughter as well. She yeah. is a professor at the uh, Michigan State, uh, where she uh, is a expert at um, uh, African queer identity um, and exploring uh, that area. And you actually got to meet her. Once, I did. Didn't you? I was. Yeah. It was very interesting. He totally fangirled. It was great. I got. I got her signature on um, uh, my copy of Things Fall Apart. Wait, you mean my copy of Things Fall Apart? Our copy of Things Fall Apart. Guys, I have a signed book. How exciting is that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my no, gosh, but thank definitely you. do check her out. <laughs> I didn't even realize. So then, so with with these movements of. Um, anti-colonialism you see these really powerful books um, but then we and these um, books come in tandem with um, outside help uh, such as uh, Malcolm X we have a book <laughs> we have a book um, this this is more of an educational book, so I don't know how how many of you will be interested in it. There will be more other books later yeah. on in the video. <laughs> Laura Laura takes I'll take it back. <laughs> takes it back to more fun books. I'm a little bit more of a heady uh, kind of academic. He's an reader. intellectual reader. I'm a creativity reader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've mm -hmm. discussed both this. are good. I do enjoy a good fun read every once in a while. Just true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But this one, so this book, um, Black Star Crescent Moon, um, analyzes um, uh, the alliance between third world countries. Oh, hold on. Uh, thank you. Third world countries and Muslim countries. Uh, so uh, Kwame Nkrumah and like Malcolm X uh, meet together and uh, talk about uh, alliances and um, allyship uh, with each other. Um, and so. This, this documents some of that history. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, as, as the years go on in the 1980s, 1990s, we see neoliberalism rise and structural adjustment occur. Um, and so what this does is it's um, at home in the US, the Back to Africa movement, um, was suppressed by the CIA and FBI, uh, who were afraid that the Black Panthers um, and Black uh, Pride um, and oppressed local leaders. And in um, Africa, neoliberalism and structural readjustment um, hindered African expression. Um, in literature and forced it into more of a commodity-based uh, economic situation. Um, so all those dreams uh, of uh, independent Africa and Pan-Africa um, were slowly crushed under debt and um, st structural adjustment. Um, so where does that leave us with African literature today? So now it's I'm actually fairly optimistic about African literature Yay! Um, because I'm seeing a, a revival of um, creativity um, and I'm what we're seeing is a bottom up uh, movement of authors 
um, and um, people are becoming more interested in um, Africa and African stories, which they should because Africa tells a unique story. It's That's one of story. oh, it Africa has such beautiful people. Um, it, their stories come from a place of pain, pain, but they're still able to express and experience such creativity and joy. So there are, there are a couple of books that Laura has read. Um, yes. That so I may have best. talked about these books a little bit before on my channel, but just in case you haven't heard of them, one that I recently read is A Song of Rest and Ruins, and this is by Roseanne A. Brown. She immigrated from Ghana, and so there's a lot of West African kind of Ghanaian mythology in this book. This book is about a competition, so it follows two different main characters. One is the princess, and the other is a boy who is an immigrant, and he has two sisters. And one sister ends up being taken by a deity, and he needs to get her back. And the way that he does this is by killing the princess. And the only way that he can kill the princess is by getting close to her through a competition. And the competition is all about different contestants represent their deity. And whoever wins, that deity gets to be like the ruler of the next year. So whether it's the sun or the water or life, all different kinds. And so it's about his journey trying to get at the princess. And the princess kind of sitting there like, I also may need to kill someone. We'll see. Um, so it's a very fun competition book with uh, West African mythology. And then another book that I want to quick talk about that I've also read are The Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adayemi. There are actually two books out so far. A third one is coming out soon and I'm so excited. Oh my word. I love both of the first two books. Um, again, she so she is actually from Nigeria as well. Represent. <laughs> and... Um, but they always refer to Nigeria as Orisha. So, Children of Blood and Bone is about... So there are some people with magic, and you tell if they have magic if your hair is white and you are called a magi. Um, but not everybody has magic, and so the royal family was super afraid of all those with magic, and so they decided to oppress them and be jerks and not treat them equally. So sad. And so it is about the main character and her brother who go on a quest to try and bring back magic so that they can take back their rightful place within the kingdom and live in harmony with those without magic rather than try and retake the land, which I thought was really cool. So if I may interrupt you. Of course. So the, both of these books you can read uh, on your own mm -hmm. and they're still really enjoyable, really fun. Mm -hmm. But if you learn about the history of Nigeria or learn about the history of Ghana um, and its mythology, it, it unlocks like another level. They're like Easter eggs. Um, like when I watch Black Panther, I would be like, ooh, 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 that's, uh, 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 Kente clock, Kente clock. And like, or, or, or I'd see something that just get me excited because uh, it, it's a little it's nod in there. to something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, yeah. it helps you understand the book better as mm -hmm. well because you're understanding the culture where it comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Brennan actually has another book that he's going to talk to us about. This is a book that neither of us have read, but we both have on our TBRs. We're super excited to read it. So this is called Homegoing by Yagyasi. Um, it's a starts in the 18th century in Ghana with two sisters. One is uh, taken and is married to an Englishman, uh, while the other uh, is uh, taken in a raid and sold into slavery um, and shipped off. Um, so I'm particularly excited for this book because uh, it analyzes and kind of puts into story um, the sort of historical and generational impacts of slavery. Um, I actually got to visit Elmina Castle um, and got to see uh, where um, thousands of thousands of slaves were um, sold. And it's a very humbling and uh, 
humbling experience. Um, and I think this book is going to be a really, it, it's going to be a tearjerker. Oh, for sure. It's going to be one heck of a tearjerker. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna cry, and it's not that long of a book either. No, like it's really only not even three hundred pages. And it's recommended so. by NPR, so and uh, Hasik. Yeah, it's got a lot of different endorsements here on the back and on the front, so oh, we're really excited for this one. And yeah. I'm sorry that I probably bored half your audience to death. <laughs> no, it's good. Sorry, it's good reading warriors. It's good. It's good to learn about I'm these a dork. things. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us on this history lesson as well as book recommendation. Um, if you have any questions, either for Brennan or for me or both of us, either about history or African literature, or even the books that we mentioned, comment them down below. We'll get back to you on that. Give this video a thumbs up if you want more videos like it, talking about like the history of literature or just giving more specific recommendations about African authors and not as well as African American mm -hmm. authors. That will be coming up in another video soon as well. We'll talk about some African American literature. Woot woot. Um, and if you're from like East Africa, South Africa, Central mm -hmm. Africa, North Africa. Anywhere or, but West Africa. <laughs> yeah, anywhere, but even West Africa. <laughs> I'd love to meet a friend. <laughs> yeah, feel free to put down a book recommendation. I've been meaning to expand. Or an author expand. recommendation. And we'll just, we'll mm -hmm. find an author and we'll just read all of their books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no, just seriously, guys, put things down below. Any kind of question, comment, recommendations. And uh, we hope that you have a wonderful rest of February. And until we see you guys in the next video, we both wish, wish you a happy reading. <laughs>